Hello, doctors and colleagues. I'm Professor Dong Suk Son at School of Medicine, Catholic University of Medical Center. I'm very pleased to share a clinical case using Flemnis, hydrodynamic piezoelectric internal sinus elevation with you. Compared to lateral approach to sinus augmentation, HP's technique is very minimally invasive surgery to augment pneumatized sinus. When Flemnitz technique is applied with HP's technique, post-operative patient discomforts will be very, very minimal. A 40 aged female patient visited my department to place dental implant at the right edential posterior maxilla. Four years ago, she had sinus augmentation using HP's technique and simultaneous implant placement at the site of a missing left first molar and this implant process has functioned well for three years. This radiographic image shows you a very low bone height at the right posterior maxilla. This cross-sectional view of Combim CT shows you about 3 mm bone height at the side of first molar and about 1 mm bone height at the side of a second molar. However, 8 mm width of alveolar ridge is observed in this radiogram. So, Flemnitz technique was planned for this patient. As shown on this intraoral view, sufficient amount of attached gingiva for Flemnitz technique is existed. A probe was utilized to verify gingival thickness at the implant site. Approximately 3 mm gingival thickness was verified. Bony undercut at the buccal surface of alveolar ridge was verified too. Even bony morphology was already examined in the Combim CT. A 4 mm wide tissue punch was utilized to remove tissue at the implant site. Sharp dissection of soft tissue is required to remove soft tissue completely at the implant site. A small curette was utilized to detach soft tissue core from alveolar bone. These removed soft tissue kept in the wet gauss because these soft tissue can be used to seal the implant site. When implant is placed at the same time, as a submerged technique. Gingival thickness at the implant site was examined again with dental probe. Approximately 3 mm gingival thickness was examined. Around the carbide tip attached with an ultrasonic piezoelectric device, surgery bone was utilized to make initial osteotomy from alveolar crest to sinus floor. When you break sinus floor with ultrasonic piezoelectric tip, round carbide tip is highly recommended than round diamond tip because its efficacy to cut the bone is more powerful than diamond coated tip. When surgeons use round carbide tip to approach sinus floor, please use circular motion or scraping motion for penetration of sinus floor as shown on this video. 
surgeons can feel tactile sense of sinus flow penetration with their fingers easily. Thanks to micrometric cut effect and selective cut effect, membrane perforation is very low when you break sinus flow with piezoelectric round covered tip. Surgeons can feel the tactile sensation to sinus membrane easily. A 2.8 mm wide HP tip with internal irrigation was positioned on the osteotomy side to apply water pressure to the sinus mucosa in order to elevate sinus membrane. The HP tip not only expands initial osteotomy but also elevates sinus mucosa by utilization of water pressure. The tip should be approached to the sinus floor slowly. Please take a close look at the water coming out from the site of first molar. This means that sinus membrane is elevated successfully before HP tip is not penetrated sinus floor. At this moment, sinus floor was broken by intrusion of HP tip into the sinus cavity. After membrane elevation at the site of second molar, the same procedure was performed at the site of first molar. The tip was pushed into the sinus floor slowly until sinus floor was broken. At this stage, 5 to 50 mm membrane elevation is usually achieved thanks to water pressure. So, HP technique usually does not rely on bone compaction to elevate sinus mucosa like other crystal approach the technique. Up and down movement of sinus mucosa is usually thin when patient takes a breath. Autologous concentrated gross factors was prepared by utilization of special centrifuge metafuse. At the altered speed from 2400 to 2700 rpm. One piece of CGF was inserted in the new compartment under the elevated sinus mucosa through the each osteotomy site. Autologous CGF is known to accelerate newborn formation and soft tissue healing. Compared to PRP or PRGF, autologous CGF is more easier to make. No biochemical additives like bovine thrombin and calcium chloride are not necessary unlike PLP or PLGF. This concept was developed by Dr. Shukran at the first time. Fibrin rich gel with autologous concentrated gross factors is known to accelerate tissue healing and decrease pain and inflammation after surgery. After insertion of two pieces of CGF, final osteotomy was performed by utilization of 3.8 mm wide implant drill. This implant drill is a final osteotomy drill to accommodate 4.7 mm wide tapered design implant with good initial stability. One step downsize the drill as a final implant drill is critical to get initial stability of implant in the posterior maxilla. The insertion of CGF was continued through the osteotomy site of first molar and second molar. A dental pinset is 
convenient tool to insert CGF into the new compartment under the elevated sinus mucosa. Several studies prove that newborn formation in the sinus without grafting materials. Therefore, bone graft is not a prerequisite for sinus augmentation. As soon as the space in the new compartment under the elevated sinus membrane is maintained, newborn formation in the sinus is always achieved. As shown on this video, when autologous concentrated gross factors is added in the sinus, healing period can be shortened. Totally, six pieces of fibrin gel with autologous concentrated factors were placed in the sinus. In this case, a 4.7 mm wide and 11.5 mm high HA coated tapered screw vent implants was placed at each osteotomy site. Even though bone height was less than 3 mm at implant size, the initial stability of implant was favorable, thanks to one step down sized osteotomy and tapered designed implant. At this stage, when implant stability was not good, two stage procedure was applied. In this situation, the excised soft tissue core will be repositioned and stabilized with suits as a submerged technique. After placement of peringeal barrier using wet gauze in the mouth in order to prevent swallowing of implant components, implant mount was removed. Gingival depth from gingival crest to implant platform was measured with dental proof. The gingival depth after implant placement should be same as the gingival depth measured before implant placement. A 3 mm high healing abutment was connected with implant because initial stability of implant was good as a non-submerged technique. This is post-operative panoramic view of Combeam CT showing approximately 11 mm vertical augmentation of sinus by utilization of water pressure. This is post-operative cross-sectional view of Combeam CT. The result from HP's technique is as the same as that from laterally approached technique as shown on this slide. This slide shows you the comparison of pre-operative and post-operative panoramic view of Combeam CT. This slide shows you comparison of pre-operative and post-operative cross-sectional view of Convim CT. As shown on this clinical video, HP's technique has many advantages compared to any other crystal approach the technique. HP's technique requires very minimal instrumentation. So, surgical technique is very simple and the final result is predictable. As shown on this clinical video, the final result from HPs is as the same as that from laterally approached technique. Therefore, HPs technique could be an alternative method to lateral approached technique. Very minimal flap or Flapness technique is used with HP's technique, so very minimal patient post-operative discomforts 
such as swelling and pain is developed. Unlike conventional osteotome technique, HP's technique does not rely on malleting to the sinus floor to break sinus floor and bone confection to elevate sinus mucosa. Therefore, this technique is absolutely free from positional vertigo. As I mentioned before, this technique usually does not rely on bone confection, so surgical cost can be reduced and patients are free from risk of cross-contamination associated with bovine or human bone. Thank you very much for your kind watching.